Good morning and welcome to the David and David on Real Estate Podcast. We are today on episode number 113, 113, lucky 113. And we have a very special guest. We have one of our shining stars from the brokerage, um, a, um, a younger realtor, Ashton Tesoro, joining us today. Ashton, welcome. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for being on the show. Great to have you on here, Ashton. Uh, we're gonna. Th this is exciting for us. I you know for David and for me too, because we've both known you for quite a while and uh, and seen your your experienced your career changes firsthand. We're excited to talk to you about that, and I think a lot of people that will watch or listen to this are gonna be really interested to hear your story. Uh, it's a great story and, and um, with a few twists and turns, and um, I can't wait to, to hear it and share it. Have you share it with everybody else? For sure, definitely. Why don't you jump in and tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, so I have been in real estate now for going on four years. Um, prior to being a realtor, I was a real estate law clerk, commercial and residential. Um, I actually worked at Corman's LLP for going on four years, I guess, before transitioning into commercial, which then led me to transition into a full-time realtor. Um, so I do have a background in, in uh, real estate law and my love of real estate kind of took over and obviously the market helped and shot me off on my career. And here I am today. Yep. Yeah, so, and even before you joined our firm, you had already been working as a clerk for a few, I forgot how many years, but it was a few years anyways, right? Yeah, three and a half years before joining your firm, yes. Yeah, because uh, you already had some some great experience before you even uh, got to us. So you've, you've been around real estate for a long time, and you certainly saw it from the end that I see real estate from, from closing transactions and helping people out on re residential transactions, commercial transactions, and... Um, so you knew you knew what the clients went through. I think you knew what the agents went through. And yeah. instead of that scaring you off, that encouraged you to say, hey, you know what? That I like that side of it. That could be interesting. Right. Yeah, so so I at started, some point, how, how did that come about? So I actually started getting my license back in 2013. And that was well before I even got my law clerk diploma and started working as a clerk. Um, I was working at a high-end equestrian store out in Mono, Ontario, and you know, looking for my permanent career. Um, I had a, my best friend's mom was a realtor. And she said I would be amazing at it. I should join, get my license and go forward. Well, took a little twist. Uh, I was looking to get my first mortgage back in 2013. So I was 21. And I walked into our top mortgage broker um, from RBC. She was known around my area. She was the one you went to. And she sat me down, she was running my numbers and she said, so what is your plan for life? And I said, oh, I'm in the process of getting my real estate license. She stopped dead in her tracks, stopped typing. She said to me, that's the biggest mistake you will ever make in your life. She's like, you're gonna make no money. You're going to be unsuccessful. You're never going to qualify for a mortgage and you're always going to be living paycheck to paycheck. And as a 21 year old girl who doesn't really have any insight into life at this point, I was terrified. I put my books on the shelf that day and I did not pick up my license again until 2020. And what forced me to pick up my books again was that Aria was closing. So I knew I had a very limited time to get this but it wasn't ever meant to be a full-time career for me. I thought, you know, I will sell some houses for myself, maybe a few family members, not gonna go into it full-time. Like that was how I looked at it. Um, but that woman steered my life very off track, which I still wanted to be involved in real estate. I still loved real estate, had a passion for it. So the next best option for me was either to be a lawyer and do real estate law that way, or to become a law clerk. And we had a friend in the family who was a law clerk at that time. I did a lot of consulting with her and I decided to go forward and, and get my law clerk diploma with the intention of potentially going to law school later. Yeah, wow. I'm glad you mentioned that because I, I remember, you know, you know, back when we, when we hired you, when you first joined us and we saw how you were 
you know, what you could take on, the way you took it on, uh, that you definitely had an entrepreneurial spirit, an appetite to grow and develop. And I really thought back then, and I remember t talking to to my partner, Jonathan, uh, at the time, um, th that I thought you would go to law school. Like, I really thought, you know, Ashton's, we're going to have to cover for Ashton because she's going to disappear for a couple of years <laughs> and then hopefully come back as a lawyer. Because I really thought that was the path that you were going to choose. I, I, you know, I really did it, you know, for a period of time there. I'm, I'm, I, I love the law. It was definitely like a passion of mine. And I 100% would have went to law school. But, you know, I take advice very strongly and from professionals who are in the industry. And I had a lot of lawyers telling me it's not the best career choice for me personally, like that I should maybe... I look at some other avenues um, because I'm going to be very tied down uh, if I go ahead and get my my uh, into law. I'm going to be very tied down. So after having those conversations with a few lawyers who I greatly respected, I just decided maybe it wasn't the right career for me. But I love the law. So yeah, and Ashton, I think you you mentioned something that we all struggle with, you know, and I think we. We all take advice from from certain people and solicit advice from certain people, but I think you have to be very careful who you take advice from. And I think the moral of the story here, you know, hearing you speak is that, um, you know, you really have to stay true to yourself. You know, you can solicit advice from from anybody you want, but ultimately, um, you have to take a leap of faith at some point, and you have to trust that. You know, if you take that leap of faith, you have what it takes to succeed. And, you know, there's this quote of what being an entrepreneur really means. And the quote goes something like, you jump off a cliff without a parachute. And the true entrepreneurial spirit is building a parachute while you're falling on the way down and making sure that you don't hit the ground, that you're able to successfully build that parachute in midair. And, you know, I, I think that's probably one of the most powerful quotes of what encompasses a true entrepreneur. And, you know, you never know if you're going to be successful. Success is not guaranteed. But if you don't try, you know, you're never going to take that first step. 100%. It was a lot of hard work to get where I am. Um, a lot of great guidance, a great team behind me. But uh, I definitely took a leap of faith by leaving my high-paying, salaried job to become a full-time realtor and basically, like you said, take a leap of faith. Yeah. And I think a lot of it is a lifestyle choice, Ashley. You correct me if I'm wrong, because you saw enough, you experienced enough of what the life is as a, as a law clerk, uh, the grind involved in that, and also what, what the lifestyle is for a lawyer. And um, it's a very different lifestyle than a realtor where you have a lot more control of your time you know, it doesn't mean you're not working hard doesn't mean you're not stressed out doesn't you know like all that you, you have it in the same ways you know in different ways different format but it, it's a different lifestyle completely different lifestyle a different kind mm -hmm. of grind right so you have to choose what works for you and i think at the time and again you correct me if i'm wrong of, of your life the fact that you'd have to go to law school at that point, like it really means like you're full time in law school. Like it's hard. You know, maybe you can do a couple deals on the side, you work a little part time, either as a clerk or selling a few properties. But you're, you know, for a few years, you're really not making much money because you're committed to law school, and that's a that's a problem. You know, what especially you know what you're not when you're not twenty to twenty two. You're later on. Like you already have a lifestyle that you want to live, and that's facing you. So, and, and we, you know, we knew you had an entrepreneurial spirit and you wanted to, to go. And I thought it was a, a great choice for you to, uh, to make that change into, uh, into real estate. Thank you for that. And I like Corman supported me through and through every single day that I was there, the transition. And now they're still my go-to lawyers. Like you guys are still the firm I call. There's no other lawyer on speed dial because <laughs> I trust the work that's being done a hundred percent. So but the support well, it's was always great to do deals with you and 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 I appreciate the compliment and it's it's good to do them because we know if we make a mistake on your file you'll correct us so mm -hmm. there's a safe uh, safety net there for us as well mm -hmm. uh, but 
I guess we should really talk because another next interesting thing that happens in the in this decision you made now you got to choose where you're going to be a realtor. Yes. So maybe talk about that a little bit. Uh, so during my clerking with your firm, I got to know David Sevilla, Manuela, the front end staff trades very, very well. Um, I did interview with a couple other brokerages, but I was looking for a place that kind of felt like home, um, where I wasn't going to be afraid to walk in there and ask the tough questions I'm going to ask and, you know, give a little bit of grief when it needs to be given and ask for advice. That was very, very, very important to me. So the other firms that I did interview with, um, or brokerages that I did interview with, I just wasn't getting that sense of comfort. Um, and it, it kind of stems back to even working with foremans. Like I can pick up the phone and not feel guilty about calling you guys at eight o'clock. I don't feel guilty when I pick up the phone and call Sabia at, at midnight. I've called her at midnight for, for help and she's there to pick up my phone call. That's important for me and that's important for my growth. So that was one of the key components that uh, led me to choosing Sutton Summit because of the relationships I had built through my clerking. Yeah, you know, at midnight, Sabia is just getting ready to go out, so you're not disturbing anything. So, <laughs> but but that's important, you know. And we talk about that with with realtors all the time. But when I'm doing seminars and webinars and talking to agents, like some some of you are afraid to go and talk to their broker and the broker of record, and, like because they they don't want to ask the questions because things that well, I, I should maybe I should know it. Maybe everybody else knows the answer to this. I don't know it. I'm going to look bad. If I talk to them and I'm always encouraging, no, it's the opposite. That's exactly why you're part of a broker. That's why they're there. They're there to support you. Nobody knows all this stuff. Nobody has all the answers. It's a moving target. I don't know all the law. I get questions every single day that I don't know the, the answers to on, on what should be a routine transaction. There's always something that comes up. So you, you just have to know how to figure it out and where to get the answers. So like, I think that's a huge point, Ashley. You have to have that comfort level with the people that you're working with. And, and David's office provides that kind of support to people, which is why I like working with them and our, and our mutual clients like working with them. There's my little commercial for, for Sutton Summit too, because, but it's true. It's true. And the good agents, the good agents, the successful agents in your brokerage are doing exactly what you're doing. They have that comfort level. The most experienced ones, you know, when they have an issue, they call David, they call Sabia, they call another experienced realtor. It's it's a full circle, right? The clients lean on the realtor and the lead, realtor leans on, on the brokerage. And if we can close that circle and, and keep that circle close, everybody's happy and everybody gets, you know, an exceptional uh, experience. And that's really, um, you know, what, what has contributed to the growth and the success of our agents over the last 37 years. So, um, you know, we work really hard on those relationships and uh, those relationships are really important to us, just like the relationships that our realtors have with their clients. They're very important to our realtors. Yeah. Yep. So well, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to ask Ashkin, what, what were, you know, in your first year of real estate, what were some of the biggest challenges that you, that you faced? Um, finding leads was definitely one of the biggest challenges. Um, and then knowing how to guide your clients, knowing that you don't have the experience that some of these other realtors have, I would say was one of the biggest challenges I have. And again, it just falls back onto my team. Like I always would take in the questions. And if I didn't know the answer, I would revert back to my team. But finding leads is definitely one of the challenging parts of being a realtor. Um, it's not easy. You have to hustle every day. You have to speak to people every day. And it's challenging when you don't know who to speak to and, and where to go. So how did you tackle it? What was your strategy when you were starting out? Well, I was very fortunate when I was starting out that um, I had my first year, I had a lot of uh, family members support me. So that kind of got me started. But my career really took off in like the second year when um, I had a realtor who was leaving the country and he was selling his primary residence and he was looking for someone to 
basically open the door, take people through his house, go and check on it, shovel the driveway um, because he's not here. So he, he needed eyes on the ground. So basically anytime a request would come in for a showing or a lead would come in through like realtor.ca, he would give it to me and I would go and show the property. Um, and from that, I built up it's, a uh, lot. We're going to jump into that in the second part. We're going to save that for another um, podcast because it's a great story. But just to go back to to your first year and, and to um, you know share some of your experiences with the first year, what other advice would you give to new agents that are just joining the business right now? Find a mentor. Find someone in the office that you enjoy working with and that you get along with and ask them to if you can shadow them they're not going to say no to you get experience find a mentor find a coach um, life like i grew up in the equestrian world i had a coach from the age of six to 21 and i would not have gotten where i got in that without a coach so find someone whether it be shadowing an experienced realtor hiring a coach do your research and find someone that clicks with you but don't just sit at home and think that the business is going to come to you because it's absolutely not. Yeah, and the advantage of doing that, it, it's just like someone who, who gets an advantage of joining a team. You know, we've talked about that in, in previous podcasts. When you're part of a team or you have a relationship with one or more mentors or other people in the office, not only are you doing your own transactions, but you get exposure to whatever they're doing. The good, the bad, and the ugly. You see what's going on with other people. You get to experience things without necessarily having the responsibility of it because you see what else is happening. And that's so valuable uh, to, to gain all. You have to be a sponge. You have to just gain that experience, see what's going on in the office, see what other transactions are going on, get a feel for the marketplace because uh, that's, a you know, it's always changing. So the more realtors you can talk to, uh, the better off you're. That's why I always, you, you know, uh, um, it's fine. My mind boggling that some people just don't want to go to the office ever. Like sometimes it's good to go to the office. If you got nothing to do, just hang around the water cooler, or the coffee machine, and just talk to people. What's going on with you? What are you doing? What, how are you staying busy? What, what happened to your transaction? You learn so much that way. My advice is jump on any opportunity that comes to you whether it be a realtor putting out a request for someone to show a property for them, an open house, any open house that you see happening in your office, ask if you can take along, ask if you can join. And you're going to learn so much in that two hours, especially just how to talk to clients, how to answer certain questions, and it'll propel you forward drastically. Yeah, I mean, it's no different than an articling student. In, in a law firm, right? They're learning firsthand by screening and, and shadowing these lawyers who have been doing it forever. That's how you create good lawyers. Right. And, and in the meantime, they're given menial tasks on files. You know, they're not, they don't have response to the full files. They're doing some of the, you know, the Joe jobs, you, you know, someone has to sweep the floor, so to speak. So they're, they're doing that type of thing. And, and sometimes you're getting better exposure, but in the meantime, you should not just be doing that. If you're just, so, you know, all I want you to do on this file is sweep the floor. You sweep the floor, but you but you find out what, what the rest of the file's all about and who else is doing what and how they're doing it. Yeah, just hey, being in the room and showing up is, is so important, right? And, you know, the conversations that we're having in the background with experienced lawyers about the file as you're sweeping the floor, you're just absorbing that information. And the next time that situation presents yourself subconsciously, you already know what the answer is. Tamor Qureshi in your office, David, uh, I think he is such an amazing lawyer because he started as a clerk. Yeah. Like he is one of the most talented lawyers that I've seen in a very long time, but he started as a clerk, putting right. files together, closing them, the paperwork, the, you know, the nitty and gritty that we get into on the clerk level. He experienced all of that firsthand and he is a, such a spectacular lawyer because of that, in my personal opinion where a lot of lawyers will walk in and, and not even want to look at what a clerk's job is because they think it's above them. It goes right back to real estate. Like go back down to the grand level, being a realtor, find out what's going on. Talk to the front desk. How many appointments have you had come in? Like, you know, know your market and talk to people who know what they're doing and have done it for a really long time. 
Yeah. And, and you're asking other people, what do you do when you get up and you, and you think you got absolutely nothing to do that day? There's absolutely nothing booked on your calendar, no meetings, no showings, no nothing. You know, how, what do you do on those days or those half days or those mornings or, or whatever? Because I think that's the key to success for a lot of uh, realtors. Schedule is the most difficult part for a realtor. And I've even felt it getting off the clerk where I clerking job where I came in and yes, I was there nine to five, but you don't manage our schedules while we're there. We know we have X amount of deals to close in a certain month, work at your own pace. The work needs to get done. Clients need to get signed. I've kind of fallen off the rails in 2023 a little bit with losing that um, schedule and that discipline. And I'm having to get myself back on it, but it's, uh, it's, you know, you make your own schedule. It's one of the most difficult parts of being a realtor for sure. Awesome. Well, Ashton, thank you so much for joining us today. We're going to cut the uh, episode here. We're going to have you back on where we want to talk to you about your second year in, in uh, real estate, where you've achieved one of the highest awards that we had a young realtor achieve uh, and your level of success was absolutely tremendous. So uh, we're going to talk to you about what led to uh, to you uh, going down that path. Uh, what was the key to your success? So please, everybody, join us next week as we continue talking to Ashton Tesoro and dive deeper into her journey as one of the top realtors at Sutton Group Summit Realty. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Ashton. Looking forward to the next one.